Let's stand and worship. Welcome, Siggy. My name's Caden. This is Kaylee. We have Dylan on the drums, Jen on bass, Grant on electric, and Matthew on keys. And we are so excited to lead you guys in worship tonight. So the Bible says in 1 Chronicle 16, praise the Lord all things. So tonight, we're just simply going to praise the Lord. We're going to have a little fun with this. Is that OK? All right, let's clap. 
Want to sing dance? And dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. The way spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom. The way spirit. And I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. And I raise a hallelujah. And my weapon is a melody, and I raise a hallelujah, and heaven comes to fight for me, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, and louder darkness flee and I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah fear you lost your hold on me
May the base be ever in your favor.
And um, we will have an amazing night of worship, and we will learn about what worship really is, and of course we will have communion and the Lord's Supper. Um, and right now, I hope, and even in the week leading up to it, I hope you're thinking about who you can invite from your schools, from your sports teams, that would really be blessed by hearing some worship and a lot of, about Jesus. So be thinking about who you can invite, because that's a very special kind of different night that we typically have. Um, and just a heads up, um, March 11th, which is the Wednesday that falls on spring break, we will not be meeting. Um, we want to give you that time to spend with family, with friends, and for some of you that may mean traveling. So March 11th, we will not be meeting for Siggy, but then March 18th, the following Wednesday, we will meet back for regular Siggy. Now, lastly, um, last week Chase talked about how um, we were going to collect an offering this week for the students that are going on a mission trip over spring break to Tampa. Now, just for a second, raise your hand if you are going on that trip. I'm missing a couple. Um, so when people go on a mission trip, people can't always physically go to wherever it is. But another way to partner with people and alongside them is by first praying for them. But secondly, by, finan by financially supporting them. So tonight you will have the opportunity later. But in the meantime, we have wonderful JC. And she has actually been on this specific mission trip to Tampa. And she is going again this year. So she's going to share a little bit about what the mission trip is all about. Okay, hey y'all. So like she said, my name is JC. This will be my fourth year going with Siggy on a spring break mission trip. And my second time going to Tampa. So... Um, it's a really awesome experience. So basically, in Tampa, we're going to be working with this church called Crossover Church. They're a lot different from any church that we have here, but it's a really awesome experience to get to go and gain perspective, um, both like believer and non-believer perspectives um, from a completely different uh, part of this country. So um, perhaps the best part of a mission trip, though, is actually coming back because you get to experience that you don't have to go to a different state or a different country to experience like life on mission. We can we can be that right now, right here. Um, so that's that's really awesome. Uh, that's why I love going on mission trips, and I hope that you guys, um, through giving and through prayer, that you get to be a part of that with us. Um, so yeah. Thank you, JC. Um, I am so glad you guys are all here tonight. And um, with that, Chase is going to come up for our message. Okay, how we doing? Doing all right? Hey, I will also say uh, this past weekend I actually heard the uh, the Chelsea's camp sock story, so it's a good one. You need to talk to her about it. It's uh, so after this, ask her what that's all about because it's worth your time. Hey, um, the past two weeks we've been um, in this series called Crucial Conversations, and you probably have noticed uh, we've had guys and girls separate the past two weeks, and I think the girls really like that. Guys, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but that was intentional because really the past two weeks has really been geared towards talking to guys and girls directly on what it means to be a man of God and a woman of God and, and just how we should then live based on how God has designed us uh, and how we should, we should treat other people, how we should look for certain traits given who we are and what we're supposed to be about. And so uh, tonight, we, we really, we've called it Crucial Conversations for a reason, uh, and that is, as the name suggests, as a church, it's really incumbent upon us to talk about these things, because you've probably noticed, um, whether you're at school, or you read, the, you read the, the, the newspaper, or you watch the news, or culture, all around you, they have these different viewpoints on what they think gender and identity and dating should be about. And very often, they are not focused on God's word. It's, it's a very ungodly, unbiblical definition. And so as a church, we really have this burden to, we've got to talk about these things. Because if we don't, who will? And it will probably be an unbiblical, ungodly narrative if we don't say something. So uh, as the screen behind me suggests, you know, we are in this three-week series. We've covered gender and identity. And tonight, it's all about dating. Now, let me first say this. I understand there are people in this room whose parents have probably told them, you can't date. And I completely uh, respect that. I honor that. And, and really, my, my goal tonight is not to say you should be dating somebody. 
And I'm not going to say it's the opposite either, but really my hope is to show you what dating is actually all about, why it's important, and really beyond that, as a man and woman of God, what it actually means and how it should look. Okay? So I'll say this. If, if you're single, there is nothing wrong with you. Okay? I know culture might say, like, well, what's the deal? Like, do you smell? Like, what, what, what is going on? Nothing about you is wrong. Okay? Single is not like this. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm just not good enough. I'm not cool enough. Um, when I was in high school, I had, like, a girlfriend for two months maybe. But, like, here's the thing. Yeah, thank you, Zach. Here's the thing. My, my parents would drive us to dinner. Like, how romantic is that? Like, it wasn't. So I was, for the most part, very, very single. And so my mentor would always ask me this. He's, he'd always say, okay, Chase, let me just ask you this question. If you were a girl, just bear with me, would you want to date yourself? And I was like, ooh, I want to say yes, but I just don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you got you to imagine me, how I am right now, I was the exact same way, but just way less mature, you know, back in high school. So you can imagine, I was probably like, I don't really know if I would date me, you know. But then he also, he went, he went further. He was like, okay, now, if you're a father and you had a little girl, would you want you to date your daughter? And I was like, probably not, you know. And so like, that's, but you got to think that way. So if you're single, you got to think, okay, am I living how I should be living? So here's the bottom line. It's simply this. Who you are should impact how you date. Who you are should impact how you date. And really, the past two weeks, we've been talking about who you are as a man or a woman in Christ. Okay? But here's the reality. Tonight is all about who you are is impacting how you date. But really, bigger picture, who you are impacts all about you. What you do, what you say. Understanding who you are always has to come first. It just has to. So here's an example. Uh, this past week, we had the, uh, the senior trip. Where are the seniors at? Yeah, I think about it all the time, trust me. Trust me. So um, I had the privilege of driving the church suburban with a lot of the senior girls. And so, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I had uh, Alexis, I had Kaylee, I had Chelsea, I had Haley Douglas, and I had Kobe in my car. Okay, and I learned something about how uh, the role of DJ operates. Apparently, the, uh, the shotgun person is like the DJ music player. See, in my car, the driver which is your boy, is a DJ. But I was wrong. I was wrong this past weekend. And it was a very, long story short, it was a very Disney-themed weekend. It was all about, like, High School Musical, which, by the way, that's a very B-minus movie. I'll just say it. It's a passing grade. Passing. Passing grade. But it's a B-minus, okay? So they were talking about High School Musical and all, like, the greatest Disney movies. And I got to tell you, girls, none of y'all got it right. So I'm going to tell you what the best movie is of all time. Um, it's The Lion King, yeah. right? And if you disagree, you're wrong. So sorry about that. But so here's, here's why I mentioned this. So in The Lion King, there's a point, I promise. About halfway through the movie, or maybe two-thirds through the movie, uh, we've already seen Mufasa die and all the tears start coming. Um, then Simba runs away. And then he, it's like... 80 years old. There's no spoilers here. Like, uh, and then he meets Timon and Pumbaa, like the legends, you know, and they have the whole, like they, they live that for like years and years. Um, and he's eating bugs. They were slimy, but they were satisfying, right? You know the story. So life is good. Uh, but then as fate would have it, who does he meet? Nala, sweet Nala. Okay, so Nala comes to like where Simba's at. And, uh, like, she's saying, like, oh, my gosh, I thought you were dead. And you're not. This is a miracle. This is crazy. Because, as it turns out, uh, Scar, who's, like, the evil uncle of Simba, who's now, like, the king because he thinks that Simba's dead, he's not a good king. And they're like, there's no food. Like, we have nothing to do. We got to fix this. And now that you're alive, we're good. Like, come back and be king. But what does he say? He's like, no, that's not me anymore. Like, that, that's who I used to be. But now... Now I'm, uh, this is my life now. Like, I, I, I messed that up. Like, this is, this is who I am. Think about that. Actually, so as I was kind of showing the team my outline, Monet had a great point. She was like, okay, I, I know it's Disney, but think about what that actually represents. Simba was truly a king, but he's eating bugs. 
And he thinks that's like, he thinks that's good. He's like, this is who I am. I, I don't need to change this. But then finally, God blessed Rafiki, right? Like he hits, he's like, hey, snap out of it. And then like Mufasa's like, remember who you are. And like he realizes, oh my gosh, I'm a king. And then he goes back and he does king stuff, right? But nothing happened until he remembered who he was. Okay, so you have to know who you are before anything else happens. So tonight, I want to talk about dating through the lens of you being a godly man and a godly woman. Sound good? Okay, if you've got a Bible, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And as you're turning there, I want to say this as well. Um, it's important to realize that the guy who actually wrote this letter was not married. So the Apostle Paul wrote this letter, and he was not married. Uh, as a matter of fact, he even said in, I think, 1 Corinthians, I'm not sure where it was exactly, but he said it's actually better if you can not, like, be lustful and passionate to not get married. But if you, if you can't do that, then get married and do it the right way. So, again, if you're single, this is not like this, uh, oh, woe is me, I'm not good enough. The Apostle Paul, who is, like, half of the New Testament author, was not married. And he was okay guy, right? He was all right. So just know that. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how dating is supposed to look through the lens of Scripture. Okay? Dating is preparation for marriage. It's not practice for divorce. Okay? It's preparation for marriage, not practice for divorce. So you got really, with that being said, ask this question. Am I ready to get married or am I not? Because if you're not, then you probably shouldn't date either. Does that make sense? Okay. But let's read what Paul says about what dating and then really what marriage is supposed to look like. So Ephesians 5, verse 22. So really, this is for the girls first, okay? This says, wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Now, as a church submits to Christ, so also wives are to submit to their husbands in everything. Okay. Okay. Let's stop there because here's the deal. Um, not, I'm not going to say this is wrong at all, but I will say this. With our current culture, there's a big movement going on with, like, you know, women's rights uh, and, you know, all, all that. None of that's wrong. But what I'm saying is when, when that movement reads words like women are to submit to men, they immediately say no. No. I ain't doing that. I'm equal. Uh, I, I am worthy. I'm valuable. And understand, Paul's not saying you're not. Okay? Paul's not saying that men are here and girls are here and just got to deal with it. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, women, your role, the way God has designed you, is to be the number one fan to your future husband, to love him, to support him, to encourage him, and to, and to really just do life with him. It's not about like he, you're not JV and he's varsity. Does that make sense? You get me? You are just encouraging him. You're with him. You're doing life with him. And you are just, you're, you're the number one fan. That's, that's your guy. That's your man. Here's the kicker, though. You choose who you submit to. Okay? You choose. Who, if there's a guy who's acting like an idiot, bye. I mean, seriously, you don't submit to that. You choose because that's your role. You encourage, you, you submit, and, and you, you support so you got to choose wisely. Is the guy worthy of that or not? Okay? So, again, this is your choice. It's not like you're forced to do this. But with that being your role as the encourager, the lover, the supporter, you got to choose wisely. Okay? Does he lead you to Christ? Does he make you better? If yes, then praise God, date him, marry him, whatever. If he doesn't, get out. I mean, submit to the right guy. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's go. Guys, your turn. Let's keep reading. 25. Husbands, love your wives. Watch this. Just as Christ loved the church. Girls, how much did Christ love the church? How much? He died for the church. That's y'all's job, fellas. You love your girl that much. That's your role. So that means when the time comes to fight for her, you fight for her. You love her well, you lead her well, because she submits to you, you better lead well. That's the role, okay? So understand, here's the, here's the reality. 
um, there's really two sides to how this plays out. Um, as a guy, I can say this. Guys can sometimes be insecure, and they'll say, you know what, I, I feel like if I could get this girl to like me, then I might feel like I'm not like a loser, and I'll just have this self-esteem, and it'll all be good. And then you lead girls on, and you play with their hearts like, like they don't matter, because you have no intention of actually loving them, leading them, and actually caring for them. If that's you, you shouldn't date. Because remember, who are you? Should drive who, what you do, and how you date. And if you're a man of God, men of God don't act like that. Okay? So if that's you, you don't date yet. Now, ladies, your turn. All right. Here's, the, here's what I've noticed about girls. Girls so badly want to be loved and validated and cared for that they settle for mediocrity or worse. Because you might say, well, at least he acknowledges me. No. The Bible says that you are worthy of the absolute best. The way Christ of the church, that's what you deserve. And you don't settle for anything less than that. Nothing less than that. And, and don't encourage guys to lead you on and, and, and have them not be who they're called to be. You need to encourage them to be the man that they're called to be by not allowing insecurity and, and childhood behavior. You know what I mean? Okay, let's keep going. This is fun. All right, 26. <laughs> to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. He did this to present the church himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. I'll be honest. I love myself, okay? And you should too, because God made you in his image, right? That's worthy of being loved, am I right? So understand that and love who you're with the exact same way, if not more, honestly, okay? Let's keep going. Verse 29, for no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, since we are members of his body. Okay, so you're seeing this theme, right? Men are to Christ and girls are the church. That's the relationship. When people see if you're dating, they should see that lived out through y'all. Hey, that, that man and that woman, that is Christ in the church, man. That's how it's supposed to be. That's, that's our role. That's how we are called to date as men and women of God. Okay? So here's an example of what it should not look like. Okay? This is going to be a, a vulnerable moment for me. Okay, so you might judge. It's okay. I get it. Every Monday night, you can find me in the same place on the couch watching The Bachelor. Okay, just relax, just relax. Okay, I see guys like, I knew, I can't trust them, I know, just chill, okay? Here's the, here's the reason why. So, this past week, just for those that don't watch it, here's where we're at, okay? The past week, I'm not, there's no spoilers. We're down to the last three, okay? Just chill, I'm, I'm going there. We're down to the last three, okay? Two of the girls are like, oh, my gosh, Peter, like, he has picked me, and this is, like, our destiny. Like, how girls, you would imagine how they would respond to, like, their crush liking them. That's how it's been. The last girl hasn't been like that. It's been the opposite. So she, she's been like, you know, Dad, I haven't told, I haven't told him yet, but I'm, I'm saving myself for marriage. And I'm afraid that if I tell him that he's going to reject me. And, guys, here's the problem. Whether you did that or not. We've, we've created that. We've, we've had girls feel like they have to give themselves up to feel loved and respected, and that's a problem. Okay? Men of God don't act like that. And that's what happens whenever we lose sight of who we're called to be. That's the result, is pressure, is temptation to do things you're not supposed to do. You know it's wrong, but out of this fear of rejection, you do it anyway. That's not how men of God lead women of God. You see what I mean? Okay, so that's the roles that guys and girls play, all right? Now let's kind of change gears a bit and talk about who you should be looking for as a future partner. So if you're in Ephesians, go to the left to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. All right, so as you turn there, the exact same author, the Apostle Paul, wrote this letter as well. So chapter 6, let's go to verse 14. 
Paul says, Don't become partners with those who do not believe. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? Newsflash, they don't, right? They're polar opposites. Let's keep going. Verse 15, what agreement does Christ have with Belial? Okay, here's some context. Belial is a Hebrew word that it, it really it translates to Satan or the devil. Okay, so read it this way. Or what does, or, or, sorry, what agreement does Christ have with the enemy, with the devil? Not a whole lot, right? Okay, so, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will dwell and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they'll be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch any unclean thing, and I will welcome you. Okay, so in this context, he's not talking directly about dating, but here's the deal. When you look for a future spouse or a person to date, whether it's a guy or a girl, you have to look at their walk with Jesus or lack thereof, potentially. Because I have heard so many times, guys and girls both say, oh, but he's just so dreamy. He looks like Tim Tebow, and he treats me well. Does he love Jesus? Well, no, then bye. Sorry. Okay? And guys, same thing. Well, she, dude, she is cute. I believe it. Does she follow Jesus? No, then bye. Okay? Because here's the thing. Ladies, from a guy's perspective, Y'all have a very rare ability to kind of sway how guys think and what guys do. And so, fellas, knowing that, you got to find a girl that's going to encourage you to not be an idiot. You know what I mean? So you got to be like-minded and equally yoked. Okay, this is, this is not only your role matters. Guys lead, girls encourage, and girls support, and girls love, all that. That's great. But you got to choose a like-minded believer as well. Because it is so easy to get sucked down to the non-believer's level. Because your goal is, oh, I'll just be a missionary dater. And she'll accept Christ. And it'll be great. And it never works that way. Well, I should say never. But very, very rarely, it works that way. And so you have to understand, you, you need to be choosy on if he loves Jesus or does she love Jesus. And will they encourage you to be who God has called you to be. Because remember, who you are should do what? Wow, you are listening good. Who you are should impact how you date, right? So you got to choose you date wisely. So here's the deal. I'll wrap up by saying this. There might be a few of y'all in here who don't know Christ. And that's totally fine. I, I'm, we're glad you're here. But if that's you, you got to fix that who you are part first. That's where it all starts. Because who you are has to be in Christ. It can't be in a girl or in a guy or a hobby because those will go away at some point. And when that happens, you got nothing. Okay? So you got to fix that problem first. Who are you? If you're a man, what does that mean? How, what has God called you to be? If you're a woman, what does that mean? How has God called you to live given your female gender? What's your role? You got to figure that out. And if you don't know, talk to me, talk to Monet, or talk to your leader. They will guide you through who you are, because that's where it all starts. Maybe take the pathways class. Figure out where you're at right now and where you got to go. What's your next step? Be in a discipleship group. Have this, have this poured into you. Reading God's word, doing life together. This all, all this matters. Because here's what could possibly happen. If you neglect this, if you forget your role, if you forget to look for other believers to, to be with, you'll be just like Simba, before he's a king, you'll be eating bugs, thinking that's all that, all that life offers. And it's not. It's not. So expect the best, demand the best, and be the best. And together, imagine what can happen if both guys and girls own their roles, live in their roles, and pursue what God has called them to do together. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So as the band comes back up to play a few more songs, just think about that. Assess where you're at. Does Ephesians 5, does that describe me? Am I leading well? Am I, am I loving and, and respecting well? And, and, and also, if you're single, again, nothing's wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. But figure out, do I need to fix myself first to then maybe when the time comes, will I be ready to date? 
And, will, and, will that, and then will I be in a healthy walk with a guy or a girl? And, and that, that fix yourself first. That's what I'm trying to say. So assess yourself, figure out where you're at, and talk to your leader. We want to walk you through how to be a godly man and a godly woman and how to coexist together as one. Sound good? Let me pray for us. God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you for your word. And um, God, my prayer tonight is, is simply this, that, that these guys and these girls will, will just know who they are, who you've called them to be, who you've made them to be. They'll know how much you love them. Uh, and, they'll, and they'll live in that. They'll accept that. They'll own their roles, and, the, and they'll run the race well. God, I pray for uh, the rest of the service as we worship you through song. God, we give all this time to you because you're worthy and you love us. And we just ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Chase. So this series, before we go into this next time of worship, I just want to talk. That this series that we've just wrapped up has been awesome in showing us our identity and revealing that to us. So these next two songs, uh, this next song is going to tell us who our identity in him is. It's going to tell us what that is. And right after that, we're going to respond to that. We're going to sing in the victory, that he, the, the battle he's won for us. And in that, he gives us our identity. So would you please stand and worship? To admire that the highest king would welcome me. And I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me. When the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, He's free indeed. I'm a child. And I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. And I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. And in my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. My Father's house, there's a place for me. And I'm a child of God, yes I am. 
Thank you, Jesus, that you've given this, this new identity. Fathers, we worship you. I pray that this just be a reminder of who we are in you. God, let this be our, our banner that we hold high, that we're a child of the Most High. Father, and I thank you. Let's sing. And I am chosen, not forsaken. And I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. And I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. And I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Through the sun, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. the story says is calling me by name cause I'm singing in the victory the victory of the cross and resting in the shadow of your redeeming love and I'm standing on the promise the promise of your Cause I am yours forever In Jesus you are mine And oh Jesus you are mine God, 
and love immeasurable and strong. And there is no one like you, God. So lead this heart to sing it all. And there is no one like you, God. Love immeasurable and strong. Whoa. There is no one like you, God. So lead this heart to sing it Father, we declare this to you, because we're singing in the victory, the victory of the cross, and resting in the shadows of your redeeming love, and I'm standing on the promise, oh, the promise of new life, because I am yours forever, and Jesus, you are mine. And oh, Jesus, you are mine. And oh, Jesus, you are mine. And there's no one like you. And yeah, there's no one like you. So we sing it all. We sing it all. So I'm singing. of the cross and resting in the shadow of your redeeming love and I'm standing on the promise oh the promise of new life cause I am yours forever in Jesus you are mine in oh Jesus you are mine God we just thank you that we get to sing these songs, Father. Father, we thank you for the battle that you've won. God, and in that, you give us our identity. Father, because without you, we're nothing. And Father, I pray that you teach that to every individual in here that, in here that doesn't know that. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. Our battles won. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I, you amaze me every day, the mercies that you bring to me and that you put in my life, God. And I pray that everybody in here gets to experience you in a mighty way tonight, Father, this week, this year, in their schools, in their houses, God. I pray that you move in every individual. God, and thank you for sending your son, Jesus. God, I pray all these things in your son, Jesus' name.